What's up fellow travelers? My name is Bren and with almost a decade of solo travel experience, I've heard so many questions, comments, and myths from fellow travelers, family members, and friends about solo traveling, such as, is it safe? Doesn't it get lonely? What if something goes wrong? How can you afford it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna break down some of the key myths of solo travel by presenting four pros and cons of solo travel. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you my number one piece of advice on how to make your first solo travel adventure a success. So let's just get right into it, shall we? In my opinion, many of the inconveniences associated with solo travel are balanced off by its advantages. So let's just begin by presenting the four main disadvantages of solo travel. Disadvantage number one. One of the first major cons of solo traveling is sharing your experiences during and after your adventures. Unfortunately, when you get back from your trip, you don't always have someone to reminisce with about your travel experiences. And photos only have a limited capacity to share those feelings you had of your adventures with your family members and your loved ones. Also, during your travels, let's be honest, you do have moments of loneliness. And it happens to the best of us. I always try to meet new people, but in certain circumstances, you can't do anything about it. For example, when I was in New Zealand, I used to drive between six and eight hours a day just to get from destination to destination. And between those times, I did find myself feeling a bit lonely and wishing I had a co-pilot to share these experiences because New Zealand's landscape is absolutely breathtaking. In these circumstances, you're kind of just left with music and podcasts, which don't get me wrong, they do help. But still, you wish you did have a travel partner. The positive side to all this is sometimes when you're traveling with a large group, you do want moments of solitude. And when you're traveling solo, you can choose between being alone and being with others. So that gives you the flexibility to really go according to how you feel on that day. Disadvantage number two. When solo traveling, you don't always have someone to lean on in tough situations. Moment of honesty here. We all get lost, we all get confused, and we all need someone to watch over our things here and there. Even though you meet tons of people while solo traveling, the reality is you can really only depend on yourself. A pragmatic example of this is when I was traveling in Slovenia, more specifically in Lake Bled, I just wanted to go for a swim in the most amazing lake I've ever seen in my whole life. I had to. I just told myself I brought my swim trunks two hours by bus to get here. I had to go for a swim. Unfortunately, I was alone that day and I just had to leave my stuff on the beach, all my valuables, my wallet, my passport. I just had to because there was nowhere else to leave it. Imagine, somebody could have just walked up and stole all my things. I just have to give confidence to people because there's lots of other travelers around me and just say, well, hopefully nothing goes wrong. But that's the reality of when you're solo traveling. You just have to have confidence in others and unfortunately sometimes that confidence gets broken and you do lose your things. That's the reality of solo traveling. You sometimes have to just give up control just to enjoy some of the little pleasures. Also, the littlest things can sometimes become a hassle when you're solo traveling, like taking pictures of yourself or eating at a restaurant. I can't tell you how many times I get back from my trip and I look at my pictures and all I have are selfies of me with my arm in them. That's right, just my arm. And unfortunately, that's all I have to show my friends. That being said, you learn little tricks here and there on how to help yourself. And also, you learn to give control to others you meet during your travels. This will help, for example, getting somebody to take a picture for you and also go and eat at the restaurant with others. Disadvantage number three, solo travel is expensive. It's more expensive than traveling as a group. The reality is, is a group can split its costs for activities, accommodations, and food. A really good example of that is when I do road trips. The reality is, is that I can't split my gas, I can't split my rental car fees, and I just can't split a lot of the costs associated to it. For example, when I was driving in New Zealand, petrol was $2 a liter. I had to eat a lot of ramen noodles just to compensate for that price. That being said, as a solo traveler, there are ways to cut costs, like staying in hostels. By the way guys, I will be publishing a video soon on hostels, I highly recommend you check it out. Disadvantage number four. The last and final con associated with solo travel is safety. Safety should always be a priority, doesn't matter if you're traveling solo or within a group. Sometimes, traveling within a group can give you a false sense of safety and lower your guard while you're traveling. That being said, when you're on your own, you're on your own. You need to take extra precautions and be extra vigilant during your travels. Being a white tall male, I feel like I can't apprehend the variety of safety concerns relating to soul travel. That's why I've asked 
two female soul travelers I've met during my travels to give me their concerns and advice when it comes to safety. Anne Marie, a fellow Canadian and traveler whom I met in Central Europe, mentioned to me the issue of harassment by men in hostels and bars and also provided us with a few safety tricks and tips while traveling solo. For example, knowing your limits, knowing when to say no, knowing your environment, and also avoiding giving personal information or showing valuables. When discussing with my German friend Charlotte, whom I met in New Zealand in 2019 during her first solo travel, she did mention not feeling particularly unsafe in New Zealand. That being said, she did mention the issue of mixed dorm rooms and hostels where men and women do share the same rooms. Considering the importance of travel safety, I will be addressing this issue in a later video, so please hit the subscribe button down below to keep up to date on my upcoming videos when it comes to travel vlogs, tips, or tricks. So now that we have addressed some of the downfalls of solo travel, let's get into the advantages. Advantage number one. In my opinion, the number one most important advantage associated with solo travel is the flexibility and efficiency it offers. Let's be honest, it can be pretty complicated trying to plan a trip with someone. First, you both need to want to go to the same place. Then you have to have the necessary funds, and after all that, you need to be available on the same dates. That can limit your capacity to travel as much as you want to. I definitely would not have been able to travel so much if I didn't travel solo. Just my last trip to New Zealand, Australia, and Hawaii cost over $10,000. That's right, I would need to convince someone to spend $10,000, not on a mortgage, not on a car lease, just on a trip, on a simple trip. I'm not saying I'm crazy. I just gotta find somebody who's as crazy as I am and that can get pretty complicated. Also, as you get older, it becomes even more difficult trying to find someone. Your friends are starting to have children, they're getting married, they have mortgages. It just gets even more complicated. One of the added benefits of solo traveling when it comes to flexibility is that you can leave whenever you want. That can allow you to travel during non-peak season and save money on airfare. And also, you can choose which day of the week you can travel. It's usually cheaper to travel on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, but definitely not on the weekend on the Fridays. So you can save some money that way. When it comes to efficiency, you can do whatever you want when you want. You don't need to consult the group. You can just do it. If you want to spend a full day at a museum, you can just spend a full day at a museum. If you're an early bird just like me, efficiency really does come in hand in the morning because you can beat lines at key attractions. In Europe, just like in many regions around the world, nine o'clock to me is the cutoff time. Usually at nine o'clock, group tours arrive and usually clog up the whole system. Advantage number two, soul travel can help you meet new people with more ease. Meeting new people is without a doubt one of my favorite elements of soul traveling. I love meeting new people, and some of these relationships are enduring. Just look at me and Anne-Marie who we've met in 2018 in Central Europe. We still talk to this day. Meeting new people can turn a normal day into an amazing day. For example, when I was in Rotorua, New Zealand, I met four people in a hostel kitchen from the United States, Canada, and Germany. And within just moments of meeting each other, we left with my car and went visit some lakes in a nearby town. And let's be honest, it was one of the greatest days of my trip. And that happens so many times when I'm doing solo traveling. When you're traveling in a group, you don't necessarily need to meet new people. But when you're traveling alone, you need to get out of your comfort zone and meet new people. Also, I've noticed that when you're traveling alone, it's easier for others to join you. But when you're traveling in a group, you have a tendency to speak your national language, which isn't always shared by everyone else. So it creates a barrier right from the get-go. Advantage number three. While I did mention that solo traveling is expensive, it can be cheaper. Now, take this very lightly, it can be cheaper depending on the type of traveler you are. Let me explain. The flexibility that's offered by solo traveling allows you to travel around the world any time of the year, which means you can avoid peak season and save money in air travel fees, activity fees, and also accommodation fees. Also, solo traveling allows you to stay in hostels, which are way cheaper than hotels or Airbnb. Also, because you choose where you're spending your money, you feel like every dollar you spend, you're getting the most out of your investment. Finally, advantage number four. Solo traveling is extremely empowering. The fact that you have no one to lean on forces you to adapt and learn new skills which you can use in your daily life back home. Just like my friends Anne-Marie and Charlotte mentioned to me, since I've been traveling solo since 2011, I've learned so many skills and tricks that have forced me to be a lot less stressful in daily situations back home. Now that I've presented four pros and cons of solo travel, here's my number one piece of advice to any future solo traveler. Meeting new people is a lot easier than you think. 
Don't be so stressed about it. The reality is, is after a few days, you're gonna part ways with these people and probably never hear from them again. So don't be so worried about what they think about you. Also, a quick question to approach people with is where are you from? I know, it sounds kind of lame, but the reality is we're all from somewhere and it's a quick starting point. Hostile common areas like kitchens are usually a great place to meet new people. But the reality is, is people in your dorm room are usually gonna be your ride and die. So meet those people, be kind, be friendly, and be open to new conversations. All in all, don't forget this one thing. It's the people that make the destination. So go meet them. Thank you so much guys for watching this video until the end. If you enjoyed it and wanna see more videos like this about travel tips, tricks, or vlogs, hit the subscribe button down below. And if you have any travel related questions, leave a comment down below and I hopefully will address it in a future video. Thank you so much guys and don't forget, safe travels. Ah, 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 ah.